So hello everyone, Micropunter here, Oliver here. Welcome again to another Saturday microscopy live stream. Hello all around the world. I see that many people already joined joined the chat uh, and I see that there are many many comments already being written. Well, today I would like uh, to uh, show you a couple of uh, hobby microscopy tools. Some of them, many of them actually also homemade. I would like to also show you some of the submissions of some of my viewers because some of you have actually sent me pictures and videos um, of things that you've created for hobby microscopy. I would like uh, to share them uh, with you, of course. And, you know, it, there's always the danger that things can become a very, little bit technical. So later on, I'm also going to show you again a few worms and how one, a few of the things that I've got here can actually be used also to observe uh, yeah, those worms here. And uh, maybe I'm also going to feed them a little bit with with some yeast. Well, um, usually at the first couple of minutes, it takes a, a little bit of time until people started to join in. So I hope that uh, everything, uh, the sound works. Uh, please uh, do give me a little thumbs up or something like that if you are able to hear me. And if for whatever reason the stream becomes interrupted, uh, this happened some time ago, uh, then I would have to restart the stream um, and uh, maybe uh, using a different link. So please, uh, yeah, do, uh, do check uh, then again. Yeah, sound is great, very good, very good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do today is the following. Um, uh, I would like to um, yeah, show you a variety of different, uh, different objects Objects, different, uh, uh, some of them homemade, uh, not but not all of them tools that are quite useful. And I'm going uh, to start off with this little device over here that I've got. This was the recommendation of one of my viewers. As a matter of fact, this is a so-called a coffee warmer. Um, and uh, you can basically put your uh, yeah, cup of tea or coffee on top here to keep it warm. But it proves to be very, very useful for actually making ringed microscope slides like I have over here. And also for growing crystals so that uh, um, we're able to um, yeah, observe them under the microscope. So I'm going to be showing you this here, um, um, uh, maybe, maybe first, I don't know. Um, and then um, I'm going to show you a couple of videos of what some other people made. Now, um, for those of you who joined in last week's uh, microscopy live stream, I actually did make a few crystals, um, crystal microscope slides, but uh, you know, I had to prepare them in advance because it took a few hours for the crystals to actually grow because the water needed to be uh, evaporated. And I'm going to show you now that using this coffee warmer here, which where you can adjust the temperature here, um, is uh, quite useful because uh, you can now dry the slides much faster. And what I would like to do as well is, is I would like to also show you uh, first before I dry the slides, um, um, I would like to uh, simply show you how to make a ringed slide. And then I'm going to show you some videos as well by someone who submitted something here and how the uh, yeah how this uh, coffee heater can actually be used also to make uh, um, to speed up the drying of the ringed slides because I would like to show you these tools first uh, for making um, yeah some crystals and then I'm going to show you a couple of other things here as well so this here is a called a slide ringing table okay um, there are yeah also possibilities to make this yourself um, and uh, um, it's a little bit of a how do you say uh, yeah I thing here where you have to put it in here and what you're able to do now is, is you're able to um, yeah to make a nice little ring here um, yeah for crystallization for example or for actually as I showed you before for putting a yeah a sample directly on here without a cover glass and uh, I'm going to focus this here first and uh, um, usually in the past when I showed this to you, I've already made a few videos, I used a little brush here uh, from this nail polish, by the way, right? And uh, you can use the little brush here to make this ring, but I found a, just a few days ago, a much more useful and better way. And uh, for that, you need a pipette, okay? So this is a so-called a microliter pipette, uh, 50 microliters with an exchangeable tip by pressing this button here. Yeah, you can actually, yeah, you can, yeah, throw off the tip um, again. And uh, I'm going to now make two slides. Uh, and I'm going to show you now also this uh, coffee heater, the slide warmer in action as well. Okay, so, um, and the reason why I'm showing this to you is, is because there is a video by one of my viewers who made a slide uh, ringing table. Um, so just uh, so that you see how this works, you give it a nice little spin. And uh, then you carefully apply... Yeah. 
Yeah, and then you've got a nice little ring here, okay? And what I'm going to do now is, um, is I'm, uh, I've actually made nicer <laughs> rings before, but I'm going to put it over here now um, on the, the coffee warmer. And after about three to five minutes, it's going to be dry, okay? So I'm just going to make a second one now, a second one now again. Okay, and then yeah, um, I'll be showing you a couple of, of uh, homemade, uh, homemade, uh, how do you say, yeah, tools. And uh, if you have any microscopy related questions, please feel free to uh, yeah to ask them in the chat. Um, usually, what I will do is, is that every couple of minutes I will interrupt a little bit myself with what I'm doing, and I will be reading the comments in the comment section. Then I'll uh, try to answer some of the questions here. And please, uh, every time when you ask a question, please put at micropuncture or at Oliver into the yeah uh, chat so that I know that this is for me. I think this ring looks much nicer. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to yeah throw off the tip and. Uh, I'm going to put it also over here um, on the slide warmer. Okay, and uh, believe it or not, <laughs> the first one, I don't know if you're able to see this, but the first one is actually already dry. Yeah. Um, it's already dry, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply a little bit um, of uh, a, um, yeah, Look, this is also something that uh, somebody sent me. Uh, a microscopy friend from Germany sent this to me a few weeks ago. Um, and this is urea, okay? And uh, over here, this here is uh, vitamin C, ascorbic acid. Last uh, week, I actually um, put them also, um, yeah, I made a live stream where I put them also um, um, on a microscope slide. Um, but uh, today, it's um, actually able to show you the whole process because the drying time is, is much faster. And I'm going to simply take the urea first, yeah, and I'm going to simply put a little bit of the water urea solution on here. Now you also see why it's important to have a little ring like this, is because this allows you uh, to yeah, actually fill out the whole ring here, and then the liquid does not spread all over the slide. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to also take now the ascorbic acid, and I'm going to do the same thing here. Yeah, and uh, then um, I'm going to wait, and uh, maybe I'm going to go up a little bit with the heat. And you know what I can do? Because uh, there is this rubber pad on here, so maybe I'm going to go to 55 again, but it actually goes faster if you take away the rubber pad, if you put it directly on here, uh, and then this uh, usually the liquid will evaporate faster. So, um, and uh, what I would like uh, to do now is as it dries, and maybe you can see then a little bit the crystals forming. Um, by the way, over here there's, there's a timer, so I can essentially adjust how long it should be on, okay? Um, and here I can adjust the temperature. Yeah, you already know that. Um, and I'm going to now do the following. Is, is um, As we're waiting uh, for the crystals to form, I'm going to go into the chat now and I'm going to now read some of the questions. Yeah, there are some people are talking a little bit in Spanish. Good evening from Poland, from Belgium, from the UK, from the United States, the Netherlands, uh, yeah, Rhode Island, Wisconsin. Sound is great. Thank you. And uh, yeah. Um, hello from Canada. What do you think about the... Uh, Carson mini flip pocket microscope. I don't think that I know it, but I think I suppose it's one of those tiny microscopes that you can use. Um, I'm thinking actually about making some reviews of these uh, tiny microscopes because they can be taken along. I don't know it yet, so I do not have an opinion about this, right? But my general um, I, um, suggestion is, is try it out and uh, yeah, then maybe you're able, yeah, maybe it's going to prove to be useful. What's the difference uh, between the 350T and the 380T? This SW380T, I've made a review on my other channel, so if you're interested in those microscopes um, as well, the difference is, is generally not that big, but the 380T um, seems to be a little bit bigger and a little bit more stable. And I think the optics are also slightly better, but there are not no huge differences. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, um, and I'm going to, is this USB powered? Thank you for the question. It's actually an important question. No, this is not USB powered. Okay, so this one is, many of these coffee warmers are USB powered. And uh, I thought about getting a USB powered one, but then decided to go for this one for several reasons. First of all, you can adjust the temperature. That was one reason. And the second thing is, is if you uh, connect it to you uh, to the USB port of the computer, then it's gonna uh, drain, really consume a lot of. It's gonna drain a lot of electricity, and I thought that simply by having it directly plugged in, I'm um, yeah. 
Um, I get a little bit, this was my kind of idea, I don't know if this is the case, because it's directly uh, plugged in, I uh, assumed that it's going to heat up much faster this way because it's simply able to get more power. This was, I, I don't know uh, about this, but I did not want to use USB and I would have needed a separate USB adapter anyway. And um, yeah, so I just said, I'm gonna go for this one over here. But um, yeah, by the way, I'm, I'm not sponsored or anything. I just bought this myself, uh, yeah, just a couple of days ago, yeah. So, and I'm going to go down here again, but I think there are no more questions here. The coffee warmer looks handy, okay. Um, what is that circle? What do you do with it? So it's a circle that I'm doing here. This is a so-called a ringed microscope slide. And the reason why you use, and there are a variety of reasons why you want to do that. I'm, I used nail polish for this, and one of the, ah, now it crystallized. Did you see? Cool. It went very quick. One of the reasons is, is because it wants to sometimes restrain the liquid. Otherwise, there's the danger that maybe the liquid is going to run over. Um, and the second thing is, is if you place a cover glass on top now, there is a little space between the cover glass and the slide because the ring is like a spacer. And this prevents some larger um, specimens to be crushed. Okay. Um, otherwise, when the water evaporates, for example, because of surface tension, then it can be in indeed that sometimes the microorganisms or the little animals that you're looking at, especially Daphnia and the water fleas, they can become crushed quite easily. Sometimes this is something that you want to do because you want to limit their movement a little bit this way. This is actually a way of, of actually slowing them down by kind of compressing them a little bit between the cover glass and the microscope slide. Um, but sometimes you don't want to do that, right? And, and, and uh, in this case, having a little bit of a spacer ring is, is quite useful and um, it has been also used in the past uh, for so-called for sealing off the microscope slides and I'm going to show you um, also how this can be done okay so I'm going to take this here off uh, here you can see that it already looks white okay so it has crystallized out so that's urea and over here this is uh, yeah this is I'm going to go down maybe a little bit with the heat uh, sometimes if it's too hot it's also not good okay this has already um, yeah, this is all, has already evaporated, but I, I'm not seeing any crystals. And if this is the case, then I'm going to show you a little trick. You can actually t slightly touch yeah, some parts here, and sometimes this will trigger the crystallization process. Okay, um, so we have to see a little bit. Okay, I'm going to switch this off now. Okay, sometimes this will actually trigger a crystallization process um, because of the dust and the dirt will actually... Um, yeah, act as so-called crystallization seas. You can actually see already that uh, it started to become a little bit lighter over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm quickly going to cool it down. I do not want to place the hot microscope slide. Yeah, and I'm going to put it now under the microscope. And then let's see if we're able to, um, yeah, see the crystals here, okay? So, um, and uh, then I'm going to show you, uh, yeah, here again, the worms. <laughs> And here we are, and uh, we move this, just a second, how does this work? Uh, and here, this here, this here, and uh, we have already, these are basically already, this is the place where I touched it, and if we actually wait a little bit, then we should be able to see that the, these uh, vitamin C crystals will start to grow, okay? Um, so this is a little bit of a question of, of patience as well, yeah? Yeah, so, but actually, um, over time, this uh, should actually start to grow as well. Yeah, um, sometimes you can see some some of the crystals starting to grow in the middle somewhere. Yeah. But essentially, uh, the reason why I'm showing this to you is is because last week um, I was not able to show you this quick process, and I had to actually prepare the slides uh, several hours in advance. So I'm going to put them to the side. Yeah, it's cr starting to go, and uh, this is now the urea, and. Uh, yeah, here we see the, yeah, also quite quite nice, quite nice crystals here. Okay, so I've got some polarization here, so it's a little bit like modern art. Yeah. yeah so that's a, a really, I mean, I don't know how. I just started a couple of minutes ago, and uh, it's a really quick way of 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 uh, growing uh, growing crystals. Yeah. So that's basically uh, the 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 function of the um, of the heating plate. 
Yeah, so you can see that uh, ringing um, is much faster this way and also growing of crystals, okay? So that's uh, simply uh, the, yeah, the, the, the new little device that I just uh, bought myself uh, um, right now, okay? So uh, yeah, I, if you're interested in, in, in doing things like this, then I can um, um, highly recommend it and uh, it has indeed made life um, easier for me. But of course, this uh, depends a lot if you're actually interested in, in making those crystal slides. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put it away again. Okay, um, and I'm going to make for in my other uh, channel, I'm going to also, of course, make a, um, how do you say, uh, I'm going to make a little review of this, okay? So, um, I want to show you now a couple of, uh, yeah, oh, can you adjust the temperature on the coffee warmer? Yes, there are four temperature settings, okay? Um, they are fixed, uh, 40 degrees centigrade, 55, 65, and 80. I think 80 is already way too hot, okay? Um, and there's another reason why I bought this, okay? and um, I'm not there yet, but I just want to simply inform you a little bit because there are, <laughs> I just have to show this to you, there are certain mounting media that need to be warmed to make them liquid, okay? Um, springtime is coming um, and I would like to mount uh, pollen slides and for mounting pollen you need a mounting medium called uh, glycerin gelatin and look at this here. February 91, this is what, how many years? That's way um, overdue and it doesn't even work anymore. I found this in the, in the laboratory, in the, in, the, in the cupboard, yeah. And this is glycerin gelatin and is actually a mounting medium which is solid and you have to warm it up to about 45 degrees centigrade uh, to melt it um, and uh, you have to warm the slide in this process. I actually tried it, it doesn't work anymore because um, somebody heated it up too much, not me. Yeah. Um, but uh, for some mounting media, you actually have to uh, you have to melt uh, them um, um, so that they become liquid, and then you can actually make uh, pollen slides, and that's what I would like uh, to do. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, let me quickly go down here. Um, the question is, is, how much is a microscope for hobby purposes? Well, microscopes, honestly, is not an expensive hobby. You can get uh, cheap introductory microscopes. Do not expect too much of them. You can get them for less than 100 euros or less than 100 dollars. These are not toy microscopes, okay? But uh, they're very basic microscopes that can get you started, yeah? So this is, uh, but I'm not saying that this is for everyone, but uh, you might want to upgrade them later on, yeah? Which brand is the coffee warmer? Where did you buy it? I got it on Amazon. I did put, for those of you who want to, there are many of them. There are many of them on, available, okay? Uh, but I did put an affiliate link, <laughs> if you want to support the channel a little bit, I put an affiliate link into the description below. But if you just go USB coffee warmer, you'll find many. But this one over here is not a USB one, right? Um, so maybe there are others that are even equally good or better. I don't know. I just uh, chose this one, right? And I would like to say, of course, thank you very much uh, to the viewer who uh, recommended uh, yeah, the use of, of coffee warmers. Yeah. So um, I'm still scrolling down. Um, are you able to make a permanent slides out of crystal slides? Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, I want to do that later. Um, I would like to um, try to put a cover glass on this here again, using again the slide ringing table. But first, because I'm talking already quite long, I do want to show you a couple of projects that some of uh, the, my viewers, some of you have actually um, yeah, submitted. And um, I would like to specifically thank uh, Hadrian Meisenberger. Um, he is also in, in the chat. Okay, um, I would like to thank specifically him because uh, he sent me several videos um, and uh, also pictures because um, he's been quite active uh, in um, yeah do, uh, doing a few things here. So I'm going. However, I'm going to start off with a little project uh, by another person over here, and now I'm going to show you a short video. You still are able to hear me, but I'm uh, I'm going to go full screen now. It is somebody made a polarization. Um, upgrade for a microscope using a CD. Have a look here, okay? So this is the video that was sent to me. This is a rotating CD um, because these are thin polished cross-section of rocks. Um, and uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, this is actually quite nice. It's the CD with a, um, yeah, in the CD cover. Um, and see those two screws there? Those two screws are actually the ones for the clips, for the, not for the clips, for the, for the mechanical stage, right? Um, so um, the CD holder, the, the CD case, therefore, um, it was, is actually used. Uh, and then on top, you've got the CD and the, the labels, all of the degrees here 
are actually there for yeah they are were made by using a printer yeah and in the center uh, there must be the, the a polarization filter because what you do is is you use polarized light um, and uh, uh, yeah the person who who made this the viewer who made this actually needed uh, this uh, to do observation of very thin rock cross sections yeah? so i think it's a really great and simple idea a great and simple upgrade and uh, seems to work apparently uh, quite quite well. Yeah. So it's. Um, I was also told that this is the thin CD case. There are thick CD cases and there are thin CD cases. And these are the thin CD cases with uh, two holes in there. Um, where basically, um, yeah, um, it's mounted there where essentially the clips uh, for the mechanical stage are. I think it's a really great um, great idea. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think uh, it's a very good thing. Um, I've also made uh, some experiments uh, using this, but with a CD, I think it's, it's a really cool idea. So I would like to now uh, show you another video here, okay, um, which was sent to me by, by, by Hadrian. And uh, these are some Reinberg filters. These are now pictures. And I need to, for those of you who don't know what Reinberg filters are, um, they give you um, beautiful colors okay um, so this is basically placed on top of the lamp here okay uh, because sometimes the filter holder is not able to hold them because uh, you look um, you can use a tool yeah like a hole punch like this to punch out the different colors um, for the Reinberg filters and then uh, they can be placed uh, actually into the filter holder but if there's no place in the filter holder you can kind of elevate it look look how many of them there are and i would like to explain a thing a few things here because i think this is quite fascinating with with the arrow up um, this is not the way i wanted it this is basically um, i need to go back to the video here i need to pause the video where how do you how do i pause the video just a second here this is what i wanted to show you over here is the arrow um, if you look for example here and here we go you're actually able to see that some of them actually have this cutout yeah um, in here and uh, i think uh, what you're able to do is you're able to combine the central part the central patch stop with the surrounding yeah i think that's a pretty cool idea because then you can get different color combinations this way yeah um, and what i have done in the past i also experimented around with those reinberg filters and i used uh, to print them on overhead foil using a color printer however the color printer is not dark enough and for this reason you sometimes need to um yeah for this reason you sometimes need to stack several of them um, on top uh, on top on top of each other okay so yeah so this is kind of the yeah the uh, a really nice uh, really nice uh, um yeah possibility of, of actually making color filters here um, my suggestion is that if you want to make those Reinberg filters you really have to measure out the correct size of the central patch stop because uh, if the patch stop is too too large or too small you do not get the effect yeah so um, yeah I think this is a really good idea um, and you know what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you um, also here if you uh, because I also have a hole punch like this right there are different sizes and uh, yeah um, what I use this for is not for how do you say not for Reinberg filters that's another suggestion leads me over to the next next um, next idea um, yeah I some some years ago I made those paper wrapped slides just for the fun of it <laughs> yeah this is just regular uh, paper and uh, then I, I used this hole punch to punch out those those circles on the paper right um, and then I used uh, simply some some glue to, to wrap the slides and then I added a label and then I covered the central I covered the central yeah the, the, where the cover glass is with paper and then I used spray um, a spray paint uh, to kind of seal everything off yeah so I've been playing around with this um, as well when did I make this I made this I don't know almost 10 years ago or so <laughs> yeah um, so there's actually also another idea um, yeah it's where you can actually totally pointless if you ask me <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but was uh, still fun to make and, and to kind of look look nice yeah uh, back in the Victorian times back I don't know 19th century um, there are some antique slides uh, which are quite nicely paper wrapped yeah it does add a little bit of stability um, uh, to the slides uh, it's interesting maybe for branding purposes if you kind of want to personalize the slides yeah uh, I don't know if it's worth the effort uh, but uh, I simply uh, played around with this uh, <laughs> with this as well here yeah um, so um, let me have a look here. 
Okay, uh, what material are the Rheinberg filters made again? Um, I'd have to ask Hadrian, um, and I think he used some. He said some uh, some fill uh, some some colored glass that is used also for cars. Apparently, for the headlight of the cars, there's some some possibilities where you can uh, something like that. If I yeah, um, yeah. But, uh, as, as if I remember correctly. So the next thing that I would like to show you is the following is I would like to now show you here a vacuum chamber which also Hadrian made. This is a very interesting um, concept and I need to explain this a little bit. Do you see a wooden rack rack in there um, for holding uh, for holding the slides? And uh, then there are also some, um, yeah, um, uh, there's a, a gorge uh, for measuring the air pressure and also a, a, a little valve for actually sucking out the air, right? Um, and um, essentially, um, this here is, it started off, uh, this is a so-called a, a moist chamber, a sponge with a little bit of water. And you only put slides into this, then, um, yeah, they do not dry out as quickly. Yeah, it's also quite, maybe you, you recognize what these white things are. These are basically for, for connecting electrical wires together. Yeah, and you can actually make a rack like this. And uh, you stack them on top of each other. And then you can actually store your slides almost indefinitely um, in there. And uh, especially water samples, they do not dry out. And then you can watch your microbes yeah, on several days yeah, mounted on the slide. Yeah, this is actually quite useful. And then a variation of this is now the vacuum chamber. I'm going to explain you right away why you why this is very useful. Yeah, so there is an air valve um, here um, and a gauge, which is uh, optional. And then you need a very strong, a sufficiently strong airtight uh, container. And then what you do is, is you pump out the air using a syringe. Why would you do that? Um, because uh, this reduces air bubbles. And some specimens are prone to air bubbles. You connect it with a, with a little, uh, rubber tube here. And um, one of uh, the reasons why I do this is to remove air bubbles. Also, if you, for example, prepare, if you make yourself, for example, some mounting media, um, yeah, if you actually want to do that, then uh, degassing it is, is quite useful. Um, so you're basically applying a vacuum and this will remove any uh, nitrogen gas or oxygen gas, uh, which air essentially, which is uh, in the mounting medium. And this also reduces um, air bubbles. Yeah? So this is, uh, this is uh, yeah, quite, uh, quite nice. And you can see that one, by pulling, by pulling the, the syringe, the, the pressure drops, but also the lid kind of bends downwards. Of course, it's because of the air pressure, right? Um, and in order to prevent this from happening, is uh, um, yeah, he uh, put some kind of a support from the inside. Yeah, so exactly a rack like this. Um, and then um, this kind of prevents the, the lid from being pushed downwards. Yeah? So you see this kind of has a double function. You can, it uh, acts as, as a slide holder um, in one hand and also prevents um, the, the lid from, from going down too much. And then you're able to yeah, apply a low pressure Quite significantly low pressure, and this will degas, uh, yeah, the, the specimen, yeah, and and will actually remove air bubbles. Uh, the air bubbles are an issue, for example, especially if you have uh, hydrophobic specimens um, that do not like to mix with water very well. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so I, I thought this was a really really cool idea, really nice idea, and uh, for this reason reason I also ordered um, some of the parts which I'm just going to show you again. Yeah, look, this is a little a clamp that kind of prevents the syringe from from going back. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think it's a really simple, straightforward. Yep, and you can you, you can open it and close it over there. So I think it's a really nice idea, um, and as a matter of fact, um, I myself was, uh, or am, or am in need of, of a vacuum chamber, and for this reason, as soon as, um, yeah, I've seen this video over here, look, a very beautifully ringed slide, yeah, um, as soon as I've seen this video over here, I decided I'm going to immediately order the parts, and I also started to make one, it's not finished yet, Okay, I'm also going to show this to you just a second. Yeah, when the video, yeah, yeah, here basically here is is the pressure and uh, um, uh, and the height uh, corresponding uh, height. Yeah, so uh, you see the the I think what four thousand meters height or so he was. Uh, yeah, so it's it's quite uh, quite a low pressure and definitely sufficient for degassing. Yeah, for degassing. Yeah, so yeah, very nice project. And I'm quickly going to show you what I've got here. 
Okay, because I also started. To look, I started to 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 make one. Okay, I'm not finished yet because I don't have a tube, and uh, so in this case I, I used a um, yeah a, a jar. Making a hole in here was really look look. This is totally messy, right? Uh, it, um, and what I did is I've got a 3D printer. So what I've done is I. 3D printed a plastic disc here, which uh, with, and with some epoxy glue, I glued it on here, and uh, yeah. So this is gonna be my my vacuum chamber, so to say. Yeah. And then of course I don't know where the syringe is. I also have a syringe here. Look, here it is. Yeah. Um, to to suck out the air. Um, and uh, but I still need uh, I still need a, a proper connection between those here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's uh, really, uh, really, uh, really nice. And uh, I would like to, um, yeah, simply then design something, maybe some kind of a rack here for holding it, and then maybe some sl slide holders inside here. And then it's also possible for degassing some of the more difficult specimens. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so I think really, really nice idea. Uh, thank you very much. But <laughs> this is not finished yet <laughs> because I do um, want to show you something else that I was sent. Okay. Um, and that's this one over here. Look at this. Yeah, also from Hadrian. This is an <laughs> yeah an electrified slide ringing table. Um, and as a matter of fact, this is I actually know the kit. It's not a kit. Um, it's a how do you call this? A construction set for children. Because when I was a kid, I used to have the same one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's a construction set for children. And this one over here is a. Can you guess? Can you guess? It's a centrifuge. Look at this. A hand centrifuge. Yeah. Uh, and by turning this, yeah. Look at this. I mean, this is so cool. Um, the centrifuge is useful if you have, for example, um, water samples with so called planktonic microorganisms. These are algae and other microbes that are kind of swimming around um, in the water, not in the, on the bottom, but actually in the water itself. Um, and by centrifuging it, you're able to separate out the solid substances much better. Here, this is an uh, electrified version. Yeah, um, and uh, so you, you see, if you're in, into hobby microscopy, there are really a lot of things, <laughs> a lot of projects that you can can try out. Yeah, um, and and if you have any projects, please do 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 share them, right? Yeah, um, but I think it's it's really cool. Yeah, yeah so that's um, if you um, are not so much into making this, or if you do not want to buy a slide ringing table, it is possible to make a slide ring ring table using a fidget spinner and gluing a CD. A CD-ROM on, on top of it that works, or I also used a um, I don't know how this is called. People who are using uh, making ceramics, ceramics pot pottery. There is this disc that is spinning, and there are cheap ones available as well. You might as well also try that. Yeah, so yeah, pretty pretty nice. Yeah, uh, I'm reading comments right now. Uh, Fischer Technik Marie. Uh, Chardon uh, says he's uh, uh, super dear. Um, when I was a kid, I was actually uh, doing a lot of work with Fischer Technik. Yeah. Yep. At which email address can we send you the pictures? You can send them to me at uh, um, at Oliver, Oliver at microbehunter.com. That would be a possibility. Oliver at microbehunter.com. Yeah. So that is uh, that's really nice. So uh, I'm going to quickly read again some of the comments here. Yeah. So if you have any pictures or also short video clips, you don't have to make a full video or anything, just a sh short clips. Uh, really, um, yeah, I would appreciate it. Uh, you can share, um, then we can share the things a little bit. Okay. So um, let me go here back again. Um, I would like to show you a few other things here, what I've made. Where is this? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> a little bit something that I tried yesterday. Look, I ordered myself from, I don't know, I think from... From China somewhere, <laughs> AliExpress. I said I wanted to have the cheapest ones. Yeah, those light boxes. <laughs> and those light boxes, I, they, I was happy I got them very cheap. And then I had the problem I could not fit in the slides because it was too narrow over here. Okay. Yeah, and still, it's still a little bit tight. And why was it? It fit, they fit in uh, up here without problems. Okay. Yeah, but here in the center, they were, it was way too narrow, and I discovered that essentially that uh, this uh, edge over here was kind of bent inwards because I think during the manufacturing process, as it cooled, um, it kind of deformed. So all four slide boxes that I ordered 
essentially were not usable anymore because it was by millimeter or two millimeters or three millimeters. It was kind of bent inwards here yeah? um, because I think as the plastic cooled after the molding and kind, kind of pulled together. And so what I did is I, I took a hot air gun <laughs> yeah, and uh, heated up everything and bent it out um, again. Um, and uh, yeah, now, now, now they're kind of usable. Yeah? Uh, again, yeah. So um, I almost threw them away, and then I realized that the problem is actually the uh, uh, deformation in, in the plastic. Yeah. So yeah, that's all just something that I fixed yesterday, and I got my four slide boxes fixed now. Okay. So next thing that I want to show you, uh, I also have to check the time a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So is also some uh, several years ago I made a video of this. I'm going to show this to you. This is a yeah. This is a, a Coke bottle. And uh, something like this, yeah, it looks uh, like this here, right? And, um, and what I do is, is I use the bicycle pump. You basically open it up here, and I, I pumped in some air. And this, um, um, I use this for compressed air to uh, remove the dust of uh, my microscope. Okay. Um, normally, you probably would uh, add a, attach somewhere a different valve uh, to pump it up, but I simply pumped it up uh, over, yeah over this you have to hold it and you have to attach the bicycle pump here you you pump it up and then for i don't know for a very few seconds it gives you a very strong puffs um, of air okay um so i'm going to quickly also show you that okay okay so i'm, I'm pumping it up right now yeah and then when you press it it actually does remove uh, it gives a, a fairly strong puffs of uh, puffs of air yeah, and uh, it's actually quite uh, usable. Um, the reason why um, I use uh, this compressed air and not um, some kind of uh, compressed tin cans, you can actually buy for computers and so on. There are those cans that you can buy which co already contra contain some kind of compressed gas, but you should not be using this. You should not be using this on, on microscopes because there is some kind of a propellant in there which actually might um, yeah, deposit um, itself on, on, on the optical surfaces. Yeah? But simply clean uh, compressed air is, is therefore uh, yeah, possible. Of course, you can also use some kind of a brush to remove it, but um, yeah, sometimes some parts are difficult to reach. Yeah? Yeah, so canned air, uh, yeah, exactly, canned air is, 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 is the uh, thing here, and uh, that is not something that I would recommend, but compressed air like this actually is, is I guess, fine. Yeah? So this was, is all just a, a recommendation here. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is, um, uh, your self-made boxes, where did I put it? Yeah, just a second. I mean, there's another self-made box that I've got here. I'm just going to show this to you, okay? Um, yeah, because we've got a laser cutter right now. I've already showed it in the past. So I, I uh, yeah, de designed this box here, a wooden box, and uh, yeah, and there's definitely no deformation happening here. Um, I put some hinges in here, but uh, I don't have not found a, a suitable, um, how do you say, um, uh, lock yet, okay? So I just wanted to just wanted to to share this with you. So um, what else do I want to show you? Um, I'm going to now very quickly um, show you a uh, just um, for the fun of it. Um, I'm going to go a little bit off topic now. Um, I'm going to show you now a new antique microscope slide uh, that I received that I ordered, and then I'm going to go back again to the to the other things I want to show you, but. Um, there is in here, this one over here, it's a very, very nice one, yeah, um, and <laughs> there's also another reason why I want to show this to you. Um, I'm going to make a separate video of this, and I don't know if you're able to read this here. It says here, tail of monkey. It's a monkey's tail. It's the cross section of the tail of a monkey. It's an antique slide. I don't know how old it is. It looks again a little bit almost like it's 100 years old. Yeah, and it's a beautiful. Uh, it's a beautiful one. Um, I think the the ring. Um, um, yeah, is, is looks also extremely nice. <laughs> and honestly, I have to tell you. Um, yeah, um, I'm not even able to make uh, make such a nice ring here. But this also answers a little bit the question that somebody had. Uh, why would you actually make ringed slides? 
Well, that is uh, the reason because the ring um, also sometimes uh, has several reasons. It's, it kind of stabilizes the cover glass so that the cover glass uh, does not, uh, um, yeah, is really connected tightly. And it also seals off the cover glass so there is no moisture is able to go in and out of uh, beneath uh, the cover glass. So it adds uh, to long-term stability and of course it also kind of looks nice. Nice, okay? Um, so this uh, must have been, yeah, uh, it's so obvious that whoever made the slide really put in a lot of love and work um, into this. It kind of shows that, uh, yeah, it, it's not just only science, so to say, but it's also aesthetics. And I would like to show this to you now. Um, and uh, for that, I'm going to quickly remove the, the, the how do you call this, uh, on top of the worms again, which we're going to look at later. I have to check, yeah. See, this is the other reason why I'm... Uh, yeah, I've got the, the, there's a water drop here, no cover glass. Yeah, and kind of the, the, the ring prevents uh, the water from, um, from going all over the place. Yeah? So, but I have to put this somewhere where I can get it again. Okay, and I'm going to quickly show you now this, uh, this slide here. And uh, let's have a look. So I need to flip this out, flip this out and just go into regular bright field. And this is how it looks like. And when I saw this, I said, wow, how beautiful. I mean, if you're not a biologist or so, the parts might not really tell you a lot. So just for a minute or so, I'm going to explain you what you're able to see here. Okay. Um, yeah, this is really nice. Uh, yeah, so I'm quite happy. Um, you might already know that I'm a teacher, of course, um, as well. So I'm going to be also using this slide here for, for illustrating a couple of, 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 uh, of things. Uh, I'll make a separate video of this, of course, but just for those of you who don't know, I'm quickly going to tell you that's uh, the bone in the center. Okay, that's uh, these are blood vessels, cross sections, arteries. Yeah, and uh, this over here. This, this, one, two, three, and here on four on the top, yeah, these are cross sections of muscles. And that's going to be important for the next thing that I want to show you, okay? Um, so those two muscles here, um, when, um, and those two muscles are um, um, working against each other, so to say, to move the tail. And those things here, you see a very thick wall over here. Uh, that is, of course, an artery. That's a blood vessel that carries blood away from the heart. Okay, so this is a, a really, a really a nice one because you can actually see quite a lot of the things that I'm also teaching in school. And um, over here on the side, those things that you see here, um, these are the so-called the hair follicles. That's the fur, cut um, uh, across. Yeah, so these are definitely, definitely uh, hair follicles. From the fur here as well. How do I know that? Because if you look um, at uh, the cross section of human skin, it looks exactly the same. Yeah. So these are basically uh, diagonally cut uh, uh, hair from from the fur. Yeah. So just wanted to show this to you um, as as one of the the new additions uh, to, uh, to my collection here. Yeah. So and um, the four muscles are therefore um, relevant. Um, for moving the tail in both directions. And I have now uh, made a little demonstration here. Let me turn this off again and let's put the slide away again. And uh, let, let me put it directly again into the box because I do not want that this kind of falls down or anything. Just a second. So, it's going to be right behind me. Because I made something, and I do have now a little challenge for for some of you. Uh, it's not a challenge, really. It's it's something that I've been thinking about making, but I'm a little bit stuck myself. Look what I made here as a model for demonstration. Okay, um, I three D printed those parts. You did some just a regular uh, air tube. Okay. And I've attached four strings here. So I tied them here on top and then there's one string going through here. There's a little hole in here, here and over here. And so basically just like the tail of the monkey, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, so you've got uh, essentially, um, and look what happens when I pull, obviously, I mean, this, yeah. When I pull here, look what happens. Then of course it's going to bend into one direction. And then when I pull on the opposing string, yeah, then of course it bends into the other direction. Okay, we, that's, yeah, essentially that's how the monkey's tail also moves. Okay, so far, so far, nothing, nothing totally um, exciting. So why am I showing this to you? 
because I just want to give you a little insight into one of the next projects, which is probably going to be, which I'm, um, it's probably going to be too difficult for me. I don't know. Okay. Um, but this concept could be used, and I need to explain this a little bit, uh, to make uh, a so-called micro manipulator for microscopy. What is that? Um, if you want to pick out individual cells under the microscope, uh, you can. It's sometimes difficult to do that with a pipette. Yeah. Um, so what it uh, so what they use in research is they use a device which is connected um, over yeah over the the, the 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 stage of the microscope and then you're able to control the pipette using some joysticks. Okay, um, and this way you're able to really go very precisely and you're able to pick out individual cells. And I was, and those micro manipulators are, of course, uh, crazily expensive. But I was kind of wondering, I don't know, could this be some kind of a, 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 a I don't know, a, a way of, of actually also kind of moving a pipette around? Yeah, even if it were only in one direction, it would already be quite useful. Hmm? Yeah, so um, so this is a little bit, uh, and, and by pulling, you don't want to pull, but maybe there's some, some where you may be able to, to, to turn something or so. Yeah, um, so this would be actually quite interesting. And then over here, you might add a, a little pipette, um, and then maybe some kind of a dropper where you can actually suck up some samples. I don't know. Yeah, so that's a little bit the, the, the idea that I, that I have has been in my mind now for a couple of months. But again, I'm not so, um, yeah, um, it's a question of time and, um, and resources um, and as well. But um, kind of a homemade micro manipulator would be kind of, uh, um, would be kind of interesting as well. So if some of you have an idea, um, then this would of course be, uh, please share, uh, share it. Or maybe some of, someone would like to try to make something, I don't know. And then maybe you can also share pictures. Um, it would be quite, uh, would be quite interesting. Okay. So I'm going to go over again into the comments section here. Uh, hi there, do you have any knowledge or opinion using UV cured nail polish as a mountain? Oh, that's an interesting one. And the thing is the following, I don't know, have you been, I don't know if you've already be, uh, watched my last uh, video from last week, just a second. I don't know where I put it. Here it is. Look what I got here. Last week, I actually bought this here. This is a clear nail gel. It's not nail polish, but it's a UV curable nail gel. And uh, I bought this because I was kind of wondering myself of whether uh, this can be useful as a mounting medium. And uh, the problem with that is it's not liquid enough, at least the nail. So maybe there is some clay, uh, nail polish available, which is thinner, but at least this nail gel does not work. But what I have, uh, if you check uh, last week's uh, video or so, then um, I actually showed you how um, I tried to use this to make those spacer rings. Okay, that's also possible. Yeah, so um, to to uh, quickly answer Frederico's uh, question is is um, um, I was not very successful with this one over here. Okay, but it's uh, it's an interesting idea and that I'm yeah, but I have not found the correct needle polish yet. Yeah. Um, so you don't see any veins in the cross section of the monkey tail. That is uh, sometimes the reason because sometimes the veins, because they have a thin wall, are collapsed together that you're not able to see them properly. Okay, so this is, um, veins have a very thin wall because they carry low blood pressure and sometimes they collapse together and they squeeze together and you do not see uh, them very well. Okay, so that is, let me quickly go through the questions again. Where do you think antique slides might be collected? I heard that these are collectible slides. Where do they come from then? Well, um, especially in the UK, in Great Britain, um, those um, in, in the 19th century during the Victorian times, they made a lot of them. Okay, they made a lot of these, uh, yeah, um, that's not again the worms. Uh, uh, they made a lot of these slides and um, yeah, so that's basically, um, and there are some people out there who collect them and uh, yeah, basically I also uh, bought a few of them. Yeah, so again, Look, here again, my worms, which I'm going to be feeding later on a little bit, okay? So, um, what I would like to do now is the following. Let me see, okay? So, yep, okay. Um, thank you, might only work for a dry mount. Okay, uh, concerning dry mounts, yes, uh, that's another thing I just wanted to say. If you have a, um, um, a microscope slide with a ring, 
Um, if you have a microscope slide with a ring, then um, you can of course uh, also place some um, material in there and then put a cover glass directly on top of it um, without uh, a, a mounting medium and that would be a dry mount. So, and now um, I'm going to show you something which I was not very successful with, okay? But I just want to demonstrate this in any case. Um, I would like to make a permanent mount of this, okay? Um, and in order to do that, I will have to connect a cover glass on top. So that is um, essentially the difficult thing. And um, I'm just going to say that I tried, <laughs> look, <laughs> I tried this several times and I was not always very successful, okay? Um, and uh, that's, by the way, PVA glue that I tried. Uh, so I'm just going to show it to you and it's going to be maybe a disaster, okay? But I uh, just don't want, yeah, but maybe some of you have, have better suggestions or better ideas. Um, and I'm going to now try to put a cover glass on top of this here and uh, on the other one as well. These were just the slides which I just made a few minutes ago. And um, I'm going to dry wipe this first. Okay. And uh, I am going, because I was not really successful with this or at least not to my satisfaction. Okay, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. And then maybe you have a, a better suggestion. You have to really center it again. Um, I've made a little a black ring here on the you know, on the slide ringing table. And usually when you spin it, you're able to see whether it's actually, you know, it's kind of reasonable in the center. Yeah, uh, almost. Okay. So, and what I'm going to do now is the following. Um, <laughs> And this is the difficult part. Um, I'm going to put another. I'm going to try to put another thin, thin ring um, directly um, on the blue one, on top, and this should act like a glue for the, um, for the for the cover glass. Okay, um, and this is difficult. Yeah, so, um, just just saying, and uh, I need a pipette again here. Um, probably not too much. So I'm going to use less of this. I'm going to give it another spin. Okay, uh, I uh, apply now a thin layer. And uh, now I have to try to somehow place, uh, do, you have a, do, you have, do you have some tweezers? I'm going to try to place now the cover glass on top here. in such a way that it's kind of more or less centered. And then you try to press it. Actually, this works better now than I expected because I, I will show you what some of my previous trials looked like. I was not so happy. <laughs> look, yeah. Um, it, it did not always uh, look very nice or some of them were extremely, yeah. Some of them he had, he had it run a little bit yeah, in there. So some of them were not very nice looking. This one was completely messed up. It's still, still workable, yeah. But I think, uh, yeah, patience and finding the right amount of, of, of this is, yeah. And then what you might want to do is, is after it's dried again, then you might uh, want to maybe uh, seal it off again yet, yet another time. Yeah? So, and then this kind of the idea of how you can make uh, permanently mounted slides of, of, of crystals because you cannot add any mounting medium because then the crystals are going to dissolve. Huh? So, and then you place it again on the, on the hot plate if you um, are impatient. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this one over here as well. Yeah, see this one is not quite as nicely looking, but let's try this here again. So... Again, the whole thing, normally you would use a brush and maybe sometimes it might work better, but uh, I think it also works okay with, with a pipette. So let's... And I've got a thin layer again. And uh, we place again the cover glass on top. I know I don't know where it is. Here it is. And it's kind of difficult to see because it's so transparent. And then you press down a little bit and you hope that it's 
that it sticks. Um, you might want to probably wipe it off with uh, some alcohol to prevent some grease from the fingers. Okay. Yeah. But I just wanted to show this to you as a as a as a, as a possibility of, of of actually making yeah permanently uh, mounted slides of crystals. Yeah. So that that's that's this here, and I would like to now have oh I quickly have to put this away the, the because otherwise I'm going to get the thing all over the place. I don't want that. So let me quickly check uh, some of the the comments. Okay. Um, okay, uh, Jake is asking, sorry if you already said this, but is this blue circle just regular nail polish and does any color work? Yeah, this is regular nail polish and the reason why I use blue is because I like blue. <laughs> it's really like that. Um, of course, you can also, uh, clear nail polish is of course also works. Um, however, there is, uh, it's difficult to see. Right, uh, because it's uh, clear on clear, um, and um, of course it's also possible to try to use clear nail polish as a mounting medium as, as such, not just for making the rings, but as a mounting medium to put the specimen in. But this is not very suitable, I found, because nail polish has a tendency to shrink quite a bit. So, for example, when you apply a ring here, yeah, even if it's fairly thick after it's dried, it goes down uh, quite quite a bit. So um, yeah, so, uh, just regular nail polish which can be diluted with acetone. Um, and um, yeah, and what I've, I've actually done is I've added a little bit, I made it a little bit thinner, I thinned it down a little bit with a few drops of acetone um, or nail polish remover you can also use, um, so simply that it can be applied more easily. Yeah? So, so this is a uh, kind of uh, the thing here. I hope I didn't forget any questions here. Yeah. Um, so this shows how skilled the microscopists were to make beautiful ringed slides back in the 19th and early 20s. Yes, um, yes. <laughs> I think it's not only on, it's not only not only a question of skill, but I think the people really took some time uh, to, to make. They took some pride in, in making those slides. Really, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, uh, you shouldn't compare this, but uh, if you get some, uh, it depends really on the brand. But if you get some cheap, uh, uh, permanently mounted microscope slides, um, I mean, <laughs> really, there's so much dust and dirt in there, and 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 badly labeled. Sometimes it's it's really incredible. Yeah. yeah. But again, I mean, these were manufactured in these modern microscope slides are sometimes manufactured in large quantities. Yeah. Sometimes pretty bad uh, specimen preparation as well. Yeah. So, um, so so far I think uh, there are no more questions unless I forgot this. Okay. So um, what am I gonna do next? Did I forget anything? The centrifuge you talked about. There's okay. Yeah. Then um, yeah, I would like to do the following. Then um, I would like to yeah show you this here. And then I'm going to move on and I'm going, we're, because there's been a little bit, the uh, I wouldn't say complaint, but some people actually mention this, uh, I should be uh, doing a little bit more microscopy and not only um, talk about technology, but um, some other suggestions. I also made separate videos of this here. This is a plastic spool for, for string, some kind of washers. And uh, yeah, I simply... This is kind of self-explanatory. Put a little nut and bolt in here, and this is a a, a tiny microtome. Yeah, so this actually um, <laughs> it actually works. <laughs> I'm not saying it works great, but what you can do is is if you have got some 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 stems of 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 plants, um, what you do is you put them in here, and if the stem is too thin, okay, then what you do is is you kind of wrap it around in a little bit of paper so that it fits in here and then you can actually advance it and by using a, a razor blade you're able to make very thin cross sections. Um, actually it works better than just by trying to cut it by, by hand without a support. Again it's not, a, not, a, not intended to, to replace any high quality microtomes or anything like that but it was simply so easy to make that uh, yeah and, and uh, that I made it and, and it's ac it actually works. Okay, so you put the specimen in here and then you basically are able to use a razor blade, razor blade and to cut it off. This one over here, um, I made a couple of years ago. This is a 3D printed one. I got the, the I did not design this, but I got the, how do you say, the, the, the plants. Uh, I did, uh, normally you should put a large washer in here. I didn't have one, so I just put a small one in here. So it kind of defeats a little bit the purpose because, yeah, but I, I yeah. And in here, it looks like this, yeah. And by turning this, 
Actually, this is totally unnecessary. By turning this, you're you're pushing up the the, the, the screw here. I don't know if you're able, even able to get it out here. And uh, this also, and then you can do your map, your own math, how far uh, one rotation is, how many millimeters, or uh, you can actually do the math yourself. And then you can get fairly thin cross sections as well. Yeah, here, ah, yeah, I didn't glue it in, so this is how it looks like. Yeah. Um, it took a pretty long time to 3D print this. Um, I'm not saying that this is actually yeah, necessary, um, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I think the the idea is is that you can use something like this and, and some homemade device yeah, um, to actually improvise a microtome, which actually works. Again, not great, but uh, at least uh, better than if you're if you're trying to cut it uh, just uh, without any tool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is actually a lunar moon. <laughs> There's an interesting comment here. Uh, I bet uh, they had no idea when they made them that thousands of people would look at the slides all around the world 100 years in the future. Exactly the same thing I've been thinking. Whoever made those slides would never have thought that <laughs> yeah, that they're going to survive uh, uh, them. So, so that's actually also something I said already previously uh, a couple of weeks ago. Is, is, is If you're into making permanently mounted slides, yeah, please put all of the information on there. Put a date on there. Put a name on there, right? Um, a little bit of the context, so that uh, because who knows? Maybe maybe in a hundred or two hundred years, uh, people are going to be looking at this. Okay. Um, so um, yeah. So let me have a look again. Yeah. If you already said, I hope I didn't forget anything. By using cured nail polish. No veins visible. And I'm just reading again. Um, uh, a question, yeah, I, I overlooked one. Why are there not any eyepiece caps for microscopes like they are of eyepieces? Uh, eyepiece caps, you mean, um, I guess you're not talking about protective caps, but uh, um, I, I guess those um, rubber caps kind of uh, for, you know what I'm going to show you? Uh, I'm going to take out my eyepiece. Uh, okay, so this is a question about eyepiece caps. Let me put the dust away. So this is my eyepiece of one of my. This is a huge thing, right? Um, are you talk? What do you mean with eyepiece caps? Do you mean those here? <laughs> do you mean those eyepiece caps? <laughs> <laughs> um, if you do, well, um, it depends on the eyepiece, right? Um, so these eyepieces have those caps, and the reason why they are there is this is for peep. Um, um, this is so called for eye relief. Um, it's called um, basically if uh, you are wearing um, no glasses, like I'm wearing no glasses now because I'm I've got contact lenses. Then you have to basically, in order to get a good picture, you have to be uh, a couple of uh, short distance away from the front lens and and by kind of uh, putting out those eyepiece caps uh, kind of this allows you to kind of rest your eyebrows brows on the um yeah on on those rubber cups and this way you basically get correct distance yeah so um it allows you to yeah it, it's it's for convenience and comfort and if when you're wearing eyeglasses uh, what you do is, is then you already have a larger distance because the eyeglasses are in the way and then you can fold it backwards like this um, and uh, then you, you, the rubber uh, cup here protects your eyeglasses from scratches. As a matter of fact, I already ended up destroying, not destroying, but scratching some of my eyeglasses because the eyepiece did not have those rubber uh, cups and therefore um, yeah, the, the, the paint was scratched away. Yeah? So um, I, I, don't know, I don't know, I hope that this kind of answers your question. Okay, um, this was uh, 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 from Don Ivan was asking, uh, why are there not any eyepiece caps? Um, I think this is what you meant with caps. Or are you referring to protective caps that kind of pr protect it from, from dust? I don't, yeah. So, uh, yep, yep. Uh, let me quickly check, check, check. Yes, I think, I hope I got everything. I got a cough. <coughs> uh, protective caps. Okay, um, so protective caps. 
Hmm, interesting. Well, uh, it's interesting, it, uh, as a matter of fact, because my microscope here did not come with protective caps, but my old microscope that I've got uh, actually did come with uh, protective caps. I don't know, um, yeah, um, because, um, maybe because, I don't know, <laughs> it's a good question, <laughs> yeah, so... Um, so let me do now the following. Um, yeah, because some people actually wrote back to me and said uh, when I actually show uh, in a video I showed some of the um, I showed some of the um, antique microscope slides and there was an interesting comment uh, saying that um, it's off topic. I should be uh, observing more living things, more microbes um, under the microscope. Uh, and uh, now I've uh, talked mostly about uh, yeah. Uh, homemade accessories and so on, which is also not microscopy related, so practical microscopy, well, it's, of course it's microscopy related, but uh, it's not stuff under the microscope. So what I decided to do uh, for, yeah, for a couple of minutes, simply for those of you who just want to see a few living things again, I collected a few ailosoma worms and uh, I'm currently working on a video again using this, uh, of those. They're kind of cute. I, I don't know what these are. Do you see those here? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's also kind of uh, they're significantly smaller. They're different. And right now, um, I do not have a cover glass on top. Okay. Um, so um, this is, uh, um, yeah, um, readily, they're just readily accessible because I do not have a, a cover glass here can go up a little bit with the magnification. I have to turn up the, the brightness. And what I would like to do is I just would like to feed them a little bit. That's it. <laughs> We're just gonna feed them, right? Um, yeah. So there is a comment here, protective caps, so the caps lack is a cost thing. Hmm. I don't know. Is, I don't know. I mean, honestly, in my view, protective caps would be quite nice because um, those optical surfaces are exposed to, 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 of course, the air and to dust. Um, but I guess they say maybe it's not necessary because you should cover the whole microscope anyway with uh, with uh, uh, protective cover. Maybe that is the reason. But then again, uh, my other Olympus, my old Olympus microscope did have protective caps. Yeah. So, but that's an that's an interesting point. Maybe. Maybe that's an e easily 3D printed, yeah? So let me again find, I have to go down again with the magnification, those worms are kind of somewhere. Where are they now? I have to find them. Here, here is one. So um, there was actually one of them that was starting to reproduce. Uh, just uh, maybe I'm able to find this one again, which is able to, which starts to reproduce. And I think this might, this might be this one over here. Okay. Yes, indeed. So uh, and a little bit of, of uh, thing here. The, um, those uh, little animals, those aeolosoma worms, um, they like to reproduce also by so-called asexual reproduction. And if you look very carefully over here, the, nah, this is going away. Over here, looks like there's a tiny little bulge there. This is where a new head is developing. It's still in an early stage, but uh, over here there is a new head developing, and then when the head is finished, the worm is going to split in half, and then you've got two worms. Okay, so that's kind of the, the idea. Here, do you see this? This part here? It's where a new head is starting to develop. Okay, with a new mouth and, and, and everything. And then it's going to split. You see? Now, now it's quite visible that there's this kind of irregularity in, in the body. And this bulge that you see here, that is the place of the new head. And then um, it's going to divide. And uh, yeah, here's another one. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to feed them, just for the fun of it, so that <laughs> some of you who wanted to see some living things again. Um, yeah, so what I've got here is I prepared a little bit of yeast suspension. I could just show you how this looks like. It's just a little bit of water with some yeast, that's it. And uh, as I, when I tried this a few days ago, they really loved eating this, okay? They really loved eating this stuff. And uh, I'm going to try to find this now. Here it is. 
Okay, and I'm going to just now and uh, look a little bit uh, because right now the digestive system seems to be fairly transparent. But as soon as I give them the yeast, you're going to see that the digestive system starts to become a little bit darker. You can actually see the food and in, inside the worm then, the yeast. Uh, so let's let's try this. Uh, I'm going to drop in now a little drop of... Where are the yeast cells? Ah, see here, it's quite a quite a bit. Okay, these are all the yeast cells that are now spreading. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little bit more water as well, because um, the whole sample otherwise is starting to dry out. Ooh, wow, this was way too much. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Okay. See, I should have taken much less. I have problems finding the worms again. Here is one on the side here. Okay, let's just follow this one along a little bit. And uh, when I tried this yesterday, I really could see they were really gulping down the yeast like, like crazy. Um, but uh, I added the dry yeast directly so that we're kind of eating away on the dry yeast. But now I've uh, um, yeah, dissolved it first. And uh, there's another one over there, maybe. Here, here, uh, here there are a few. Here we go. Ah, yeah, and can you already see? Look, 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 in, in, look into the worm. Do you actually see that it's darker inside? Yeah. See, they are now really gulping up the yeast here. Yeah, and uh, you can actually see the food, the yeast uh, travel in, inside the digestive system. So, so it's kind of... Yeah, so it's kind of uh, kind of uh, fun to do that. Yeah, somebody's commenting. I cannot believe it. Eighty nine people watching. Yes, every every week it's uh, becoming a little bit more. Um, yeah, it's uh, if you have joined in a little bit uh, late. Uh, every week I'm going to do a live stream about microscopy. This live stream I've divided into two parts. During the first hour, I showed some of the uh, some uh, homemade uh, microscopy accessories, but uh, because. Uh, Actually, microscopy is all about observing. I decided to, for a couple of minutes, uh, um, to also um, yeah, show you some living things because people also want uh, to see uh, some things directly under the microscope as well. Yeah? Let me quickly flip up the, the condenser. Maybe the quality will become a little bit better now. Yeah, so I put on the polarization. Yeah, And here now, nicely visible, look. Uh, how the how the worm starts to become dark on the inside. That's all the, the food that it's eaten. Yeah, and you can actually see now how the yeast is is passing through uh, the digestive system. Uh, do you use dry yeast for feeding Iolosoma? Well, yesterday I directly added the dry yeast, um, and um, I allowed it to dissolve on the microscope slide. And this and today this one I is dry yeast which I pre-dissolved simply because it, it spreads faster. Okay. Uh, by the way, I'm going to very soon release a video um, also about these worms, not only about the dry yeast, what you're seeing right now, but where I was feeding them potato starch grains and uh, they can be, because they're polarizing, they can be seen really nicely um, inside the digestive system as well. But <laughs> the, the, they have a really difficult time digesting them because they're kind of very... Um, uh, hard and large, but um, yeah, so you can actually see the, how some of those um, uh, potato starch grains got stuck <laughs> inside the worm. So I have to find another one. Where, where are they? You see inside the yeast here, maybe? Yeah, so I need to refocus. Okay. Look, it's kind of interesting. It's almost like some of the yeast is kind of connected together, almost like if it's some kind of slime. Yes. So what they seem to have is they seem to have a little cilia, which are kind of little here, um, in the mouth region, and this is how they are essentially sucking up the whole thing. Yeah. Here is another one, a second one. Um, where can you find them? Um, uh, the sample is uh, quite easy. I, we've got an aquarium, not, not me personally, but in the school, we've got an aquarium. So I took some water plants, uh, 
and uh, some of the water plants of course started to de decompose and settle down in the bottom of the jar and after a couple of weeks uh, yeah in this decomposing material the worms started to thrive i've got a lot of them now yeah. you see how the yeast cells here there seems to be some kind of a, like a like a slime layer um, surrounding uh, these worms quite interesting as well and here again nicely visible uh, the place where they collected uh, all of the food and then you, you should be able to see the food travel through the digestive system so can you explain the colors in the background why they change in water look at this look at these colors okay um, my microscope has uh, um, uh, a, a technique called DIC, which uh, stands for Differential Interference Contrast, which uh, is a slightly more advanced and also expensive um, yeah, <laughs> technique. And um, basically it uses polarized light. Um, so there's a polarization filter and, and you, you have also special uh, prisms that you uh, that I put into the uh, that I have in my uh, condenser and then um, on the top um, of uh, above the, the between the eyepieces and and the and, and, and the objectives there's another prism and I can by rotating a tiny knob I'm able to shift this prism and this gives different colors yeah. and uh, yeah so basically um, I'm using this uh, because it simply looks nicer <laughs> that's that's the that's the only reason right look at this how it, how it pulls in all of the food all of the yeast look at this really uh, really nice <laughs> So um, and uh, yeah, in bright field, just regular bright field. Uh, so basically, how yeah you would normally see it, um, it would be like this. And for this reason, if you want to have more colors, uh, for this reason, you add uh, then, for example, the Reinberg filters uh, that uh, um, yeah that we talked about before, and then you can add color. I cannot unfortunately demonstrate that uh, using this microscope here because uh, um, all of the filter holders are already occupied you know, with the prisms. Um, but yeah, you see, you can yeah. It, it's mostly a question of, of of simply of colors and appearance. But if you just want to have co co and it takes a lot away a lot, you need a really powerful LED as well, right? Yeah. And then you just kind of play around a little bit with the colors. It's a question of taste. Usually, I, I leave it a little bit bluish in the background to give the impression of water. And uh, you turn it up again a little bit. Yeah. Look how it fills up the, the whole digestive system. Oh, wow. Ah, now you're able to see where the new head starts to form quite nicely. Okay. Yeah, so you can see it slowly is pushed through the whole worm. It will stay in there for some time because it's being digested. Yeah. So I'm quickly reading again. Can you show the bright field to DIC? Ah, yeah, yes. Okay, so that's what I've just done. Okay. Um, there is, because I also have one phase contrast, um, I also have one phase contrast. So let's go down to four times. Let's go to over here. Um, and you can use the phase contrast filter also for dark field. So this would be dark field. Okay. Um, so pretty much any microscope with a filter holder, if you um, um, yeah, just Google dark field, you can it's really easily uh, uh, you can really make it very easily. But uh, if you buy very cheap microscopes in the um, yeah, introductory microscopes, you cannot get this dark field because uh, these do not have a condenser. Yeah, so but yeah. Do they secrete mucus? Um, yeah, I think that's the slime. It seems to be like they're secreting mucus uh, indeed. Um, uh, because you see the yeast cells sticking together and that's something that you normally do not see when you do not add any yeast yeah? so it's kind of interesting to um, by adding particles like yeast or even milk um, so I recommend if you, were, if you want to look at some ciliates and microbes add a small, really a small amount of milk uh, definitely not as much as, as I added yeast here and then the milk particles, the oil droplets uh, they will actually uh, show you how water is flowing 
So, yeah. What's the difference between phase contrast and dark field? There's a huge difference. Um, basically, in dark field, um, what happens is uh, that the light from the microscope, from, from the lamp, is not able to go directly into the objective because there is a filter there that blocks the light. It's only the indirect light, the light that bounces off the worms, in this case, that can be seen. It's a little bit like when you're in a dark room, when you're in a dark room and you're, there is a tiny hole and the, even the window is dark and there's a tiny hole somewhere with sunlight going through the window and then you're able to see the dust floating in the, in, 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 yeah, in the air of the room. Uh, so the dust is bright on a dark background and that would be uh, equivalent to this here. And phase contrast is, um, I cannot show you here. Because even though I have phase contrast objective, I only have it for my 40 times objective. And uh, this basically would mean that I would now basically touch the, the liquid in here. And phase contrast, this is used uh, primarily if you want to observe bacteria a lot. Um, bacteria are very transparent organisms, difficult to see. It's not a question of magnification alone, but they're difficult to see because they um, are so transparent. And phase contrast will change... Uh, um, let's put, yeah, I want uh, to re differences in refractive index into differences of brightness. It's a little too too difficult uh, <laughs> to explain. So phase contrast essentially will change, um, will make the bacteria appear dark on a bright background, even though they're transparent. So for example, if you put a, a glass marble, if you put a glass marble into a glass of water, then it's difficult to see. But phase contrast, the optics are designed in such a way that this glass marble would then appear to be darker on a white background. Okay, so it's, uh, that's kind of the thing. So phase contrast has highly specific um, uh, uses. Um, I, I personally would not say that it's always very useful unless you have specific requirements. Okay, so for example, especially if you want to watch bacteria, then phase contrast is quite useful. Um, otherwise, uh, the, the objects don't look quite as natural. So especially water samples, like the ones that we have over here, in phase contrast, they don't look quite as good. The specimen should be fairly thin. Yeah? To, yeah? Ah, yeah, here we are already at the, at the edge. Okay, let me, let me quickly see a little bit how this works. Yeah. Um, can my Swift microscope use dark field? Yes. This, uh, which, which Swift? No, 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 no. Just a second. Which one? Uh, the, does it have a condenser with a filter holder? Then yes. So the Swift uh, 380T and the 350 and so on, yes, they can do that. Okay, but I know that there's some Swift microscopes um, that do not have a, a, a condenser and a f no, no filter holder, and then it does not work. Okay. But then uh, it's not a big deal. You just basically uh, you use the microscope for, yeah, and uh, then you can always upgrade later on. Yeah. So, yeah, people, um, it's one hour 20. Uh, in the next couple of minutes, I would like to stop again for this week. Okay. Um, if you have any, any remaining questions, do you have any experience with the Zeiss Protostar 3? No, unfortunately not. Um, I mean, honestly, but if it's a Zeiss, <laughs> not much can go wrong, I would say, right? Uh, but probably it's also, I don't know the microscope, but most likely also probably more on the expensive side. The, the, the thing about those brand microscopes like Zeiss, Leica, Olympus, and so on, it, it's not necessarily only a question of, of the microscope quality alone. That's, of course, one thing, but it's the availability of spare parts, so if you, um, yeah, if you want to upgrade or if you have uh, something that needs to be exchanged or serviced or whatever, those brand microscopes essentially are designed um, to be uh, maintainable, you know, to be fixed if there's something. You can take it apart, get it cleaned, get it re-oiled, re-lubricated and so on. Um, you find a, a large selection of, of optics and objectives and so on. Um, so that is the real advantage of those brand microscopes. Yeah? Um, the, 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 the cheaper microscopes, uh, yeah, like um, the ones that you, uh, yeah, like uh, the ones we talked, there was a question about Swift, for example, and, and, and so on. Um, um, Amscope, Swift, Omax, and those uh, economical microscopes, um, they basically, um, yeah, are not quite as upgradable. 
because the companies uh, simply deliver them as they are and then they, they basically come out of the box like this. Yeah? Um, and uh, so that's, uh, the, I would say, one of the, the, the main differences, but this does not mean that they're yeah, any less useful or so. I have an Amscope uh, B120C with a filter holder and an AVE condenser. Would that allow dark field? Look for the filter holder and um, usually swing out or pop on filter holder. And then if it has that, please Google, not Google, go into my other YouTube channel. I have two. The other one is called Microbe Hunter Microscopy. So very similar to this one over there. And I made several videos about making filters, also Reinberg filters, also dark field filters. Oblique illumination is really nice, very easy to make. And so basically what you do is this oblique illumination will give you a similar effect like the one that you have over here. Look, the worm looks almost a little bit three-dimensional, like it has uh, some kind of, uh, yeah, it stands out a little bit because of a shadow. Oblique illumination will be able to produce that. So if you have a microscope with a filter holder, then by all means, try dark field, Reinberg, and so on. Um, I made separate videos of those, but you need to design the filters really um, co correctly. I mean, the, the, the central size of the patch stop is really important. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so this is, um, yeah, you see this, uh, this worm is pretty, <laughs> pretty full now. <laughs> Look at this dark blob now that, yeah, it's quite eaten a lot. Um, and I think that I did not try, I wanted to try that. It has been recommended to stain the yeast first using um, some stains uh, because then apparently you're able to see it much be yet better, the food inside the organisms. Yeah? So this is a little bit uh, the thing. Yeah, look, this, there must be a huge mucus accumulation. Look at this, there's all the slime. Yeah? But these worms are really happy now. They, they really have a full stomach now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to take the slide, I'm going to put it back into the jar and uh, then they're gonna start happily reproducing again because finally they're, they're full again. <laughs> but there's plenty of food anyway in the jar, all the deco decomposing plant material and, and so on. But uh, they seem to really like the yeast. Yeah. yeah. Oblique, exactly. Oblique is incredible. This is oblique illumination. This is really um, uh, is a variation of dark field. So basically, what you do is, is you take a dark field filter, patch stop, and you do not put it in all the way, but you kind of uh, swing out the filter holder a little bit, and this gives you sometimes really surprisingly good impressions as well. Yeah? So if you've got a a, um, a microscope with uh, with a filter holder, do try dark field, Reinberg, oblique. Try it all out. I, I made videos. And uh, also with the video today, um, yeah, with the suggestion today to use those colored uh, plastic and use a, using a puncher to punch out those filters, that uh, really allows you to, yeah, uh, really allows you to, to really expand a lot. Uh, I, get, I get a lot of emails uh, from people asking, um, I would like to upgrade my microscope and, and which objective should I get or should I get better eyepieces and, and so on. And I usually say this, wow, look at this guy. Um, uh, I says, yeah, of course you can do that, but it, it won't be, oh, I want to get a plan objective instead of uh, yeah, the regular ones. And, um, and I say, yeah, um, but don't be, of course they have a better quality, no question, right? Um, but, the, but maybe it might not, the difference might not be as striking as you hope for. But if you play around with filters and dark field and, or, and Reinberg and these uh, polarization, heaven's sake, yeah? um, uh, polarization is really, really uh, nice as well. Can be done with uh, a lot of microscopes. Um, this is really a, um, a place where you can, as a hobbyist, can, can do a lot of experimentation. Yeah? Um, and probably you'll get, get a better visual effect than uh, you know, trying to just upgrade the optics. You know, even though that's also possible and sometimes, yeah, but don't, uh, but know what you're doing, yeah, and don't expect too much, yeah. That monkey tail was great, never seen that one anywhere. Uh, yeah. So uh, concerning the mon monkey tail that I showed you, um, a, a separate video will be made, okay, and uh, I'll publish this in, 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 um, in the, how do you call it, in the channel as well, yeah. So, People, one hour and uh, one and a half hours uh, already. So what I'm going to do now is, um, as a last act of mercy, I'm going to take the jar. 
yeah, with the, the water sample, and I'm going to put. I'm going to put the yeah, the worms back in there together with the yeast. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm just going to take some of the liquid in here. I'm just going to rinse it. And that should do it. So all of the yeast is gone as well. So we, I'm adding a little bit of food as well. Let's dip, dump this in here. Yeah, I think. Let me. Yeah, usually they're flushed off right away. Yep. So everything is uh, maybe over here. No. Yep. So all of the worms are back in here, okay? And uh, I'm going to put the slide over there. And um, I think uh, I'm going to say bye-bye for, for, for this week, okay? I'm glad that the stream was not interrupted, yeah? Um, I do see that there are some remaining, there was a thank you here. If there is no algae in my jar, does that, that um, is, does this mean that there's no life or very little life? Let's put it this way. Uh, that's an important question, actually. So let me quickly go through the last comments here. If there are no, um, if you want to observe water samples and if you want to see a lot of interesting stuff, you need to have some kind of solid material in there. So if you go out to a pond or a stream, if you want to collect some water, do not collect the water that's just floating around, but collect some solid material um, yeah, from the from the bottom of, of the pond. Why? Because those algae that you see in here, the green stuff, that is the start of the food chain. Yeah, they are producing oxygen as well, right? Um, some of this material is decomposing, and that's again a food source. Many microbes, microorganisms, they like to connect and attach themselves to a the surface to form a so-called a biofilm. And those uh, plant material and the algae are essentially also, um, yeah the surface. Um, if you collect a water sample and if you look at it and you see that this water is pretty clear, actually. The water itself is clear, clear. So if I were to put a water, this water under the microscope directly, I'm not going to see anything. Um, however, there are some ponds um, out there where the water is not clear, but the water is uh, green. The water itself is kind of cloudy. I don't know if I have something like this here. No. Yeah, I, I have got it. Just a second. Okay. Here is another one. Yeah, here you can actually see that the water is is, is cloudy, right? Um, then there are some algae floating around in there, but the concentration is too low. Yeah, so if I were to take a sample here and put it on the slide, of course I'm going to see a few algae here and there, but not a lot, not very interesting. And for this reason, you need some kind of a centrifuge to concentrate them. Um, so, um, yeah, but uh, yeah, again here, this jar is a year old and there are plenty of, of um, water fleas, Daphnia, Ostracods and so on in here. Yeah. So it's a little bit my, my, my yeah, pond on the windowsill, okay? So this is the thing, so always, uh, always collect solid material, okay? So, and uh, yeah, there are no comments for me, I think, um, yeah. And what I'm going to do now is I would like to say a big thank you to, to Hadrian for having sent me the videos. Really a big thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, a big thank you also for um, yeah, the viewer who sent me this one over here with the, with the CD. Okay, that is uh, also a very useful one. And uh, if you have any um, any uh, anything that uh, any interesting projects that you would like to share, please uh, send them to me as well. Uh, but for today, I'm going to call it quits. I uh, hope to see you again next week. Um, yeah, happy microbe hunting as always, and bye-bye. Uh,